So the last thing that we need to do here in Enscape is capture our images that we have created. And Enscape has a whole capturing menu. If you go to the settings menu, you'll see that there's a tab called capture. And I'm going to maximize the Enscape window now. Because once you go to capture, you'll want to make the image of Enscape the same size as your screen, or at least make it the proportion of the view that you want to get as an image file. Because so what it's going to do, it's going to save whatever you're looking at as an image file. So if you have a square view on your screen, it's going to export a square. There are a number of different features to the capturing. First of all, normally it captures the window dimension. So if your screen is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, it will capture that. I would strongly recommend if you're submitting an assignment, you should just choose like 1080p. That's probably fine. Although most of you actually your window dimension is, is going to be higher than that, particularly those of you using either a high end PC or a Mac. As far as file folders, you can choose whichever folder makes sense for your filing system. You can choose JPEG or PNG. I'm going to choose PNG. I just like the transparency that you have in those. And then there's a hotkey, Shift F11. That's kind of the normal uh, one. You can change that if for some reason you want to change it. I don't know why you would want to, but you might want to. Then that's basically it. Now, if you have an image that you want to go and print, I would choose the 4K. Once that's all set, back in your Enscape window, you can just do Shift F11, choose somewhere to save it. It will name it based on the time that you have clicked Export. If the proportion you have chosen varies from your screen, mine does ever so slightly, you'll get black bars indicating what that is. So if you had some custom image size, it will show you the cropping. And then it's just a matter of waiting for the image to be exported. I'm exporting at a very high resolution, so it could actually take up to a minute. And you can see here's the image file that I exported. Let's zoom in on it. You get a pretty good sense of how sharp it is. So what if you want to render your floor plans and other orthographic views using Enscape? Well, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but the world is not perfect and neither is Enscape. It will just not do floor plans and other orthographic views. For whatever reason, it cannot handle the parallel projection. You know, the camera parallel projection option, it, it, it can't do that. There is, however, kind of a workaround. And what you should do, let's, let's set up a floor plan. So take your overview of your model and let's turn on the section planes. Okay, there's my beautiful section planes. And I'm going to double click on this top one here to activate the floor plan. And you'll want to make sure that the synchronize views button is checked so that any changes you make in your SketchUp view will be reflected in your Enscape view. Anyway, uh, it does not render, by the way, these section planes. And there are a few settings we're going to want to change. Go to my settings menu, my Enscape settings, that is. First of all, we uh, do want to probably crank up the outlines just a little bit. Uh, like a lot of drawings, when there are similar colors like there are in this floor plan, you're going to want us to be able to see those a little more clearly. Uh, we don't actually need like an ultra setting. In fact, medium is probably fine. So if your computer is getting a little slow, then that's fine. Anyway, we'll stick with uh, these settings, close this out. Now, uh, we want to put this in top view. You could go to camera, standard views, top view. You could also click on one of these uh, standard views here in the view toolbar, which I've called up. This is available on the PC under the toolbars menu or on a Mac when you customize your toolbar. The trick is right now we're getting a little bit of perspective distortion. It's kind of a three point perspective. What we want to do is go zoom way out here and change my camera field of view. Remember that field of view thing? We'll just change it to one and enter. And then we'll just zoom extents here. And like magic, you have yourself a floor plan. A couple of settings that you can change here to make it look a little nicer. 
We can of course change the exposure brightness a little bit, but actually there's a new setting if you have the latest version of Enscape that allows you to fiddle with the sun brightness a little more precisely. This is super nice in plan. We can kind of get those shadows just the darkness that we want. We can also make them really crisp and sharp or nice and soft. Ah, there we go. Either one, uh, there's no kind of, you know, single size that fits all. Also, uh, normally the ground is white. You can just make it clear. It doesn't actually show up as totally clear. It just shows up as kind of gray, but this will allow you in your page layout program a few more options for how to handle it. Finally, make sure that your capture menu is set to Ultra HD. They don't have the 4K anymore. Now it's these other presettings here. One last thing you can change, or you don't have to, but you might want to, is the angle of the shadows. I have called up the shadows toolbar just because I like to play with these sliders here. What this will do, watch how the shadows change over the course of the year. I can get those shadows just at the right angle. As a general rule, in the summer, the angle of the sun is much higher. And in the winter, the angle of the sun is much lower, so you get deeper shadows. It's kind of an aesthetic decision. However, I would say that probably those shorter shadows are gonna be more effective. And then if you don't like them, you can modify them using the shadow settings. Then just shift F11 to capture your window and you're good to go. As usual, Enscape will give you a preview of the capture that you're going to get. If you want to do your other orthographic views, it's really pretty straightforward. You just want to orbit your model around, activate the section that is the one which will give you the view you want. You'll have to figure out which of these little standard houses is the right view. If it's right or left or front or back, this one looks correct. I believe we are seeing some background noise here. Maybe that's some fog. And you can just drag that fog setting right down. You can also give yourself a white background and make the horizon clear rather than one of these other presets. And that will give you a nice clean background to export. And then just zoom in as you would normally, or we can zoom in here in this window. Sometimes these two windows don't seem to align perfectly, but that's pretty close to an orthographic section. It is absolutely not 100% perfect don't fool yourselves, this isn't a construction drawing, but you can see that it's a pretty nice looking rendering nonetheless. Now, what else can Enscape do? Well, here's a fun thing that we can export and that is a movie. And what I like about that is you can be in the full screen Enscape mode and you don't have to go back and make any sort of mod modifications to the model. This is probably a good time to enter walk mode. I'm just gonna tap the space bar. I just tap the spacebar. I like to do that for animations so that I don't accidentally walk through walls. The way animations work in Enscape is you have a series of what are called keyframes. And those are basically recording the location and aiming of the camera. And so if I add a keyframe here at the start of my project, and maybe I'm going to walk to the other end of the space, turn around and look forward. Well, all I have to do is Click add keyframe and it, it puts a little triangular shaped icon here on my timeline. I could use my keyboard to kind of move forward. See how it doesn't like to walk through the people. And I could come up here, add a keyframe. I can even change what I'm looking at so that I walk forward and look at this table here, the seating area. And I'll continue to look at the seating area. And you can see these little diamonds starting to appear in my key, my uh, timeline. I'll add another keyframe. And what's funny, if I go over sideways here, you will see a little icon indicating the path of the camera here. Each of those camera keyframes that I saved is right there. And now I can preview the walkthrough. You can see here I'm looking off at that seating area and now looking back forward. 
And that's really all there is to it. Now you can make additional changes to these keyframes. It's pretty straightforward. You can make the camera shaky like in those, uh, I don't know, science fiction movies. You can also click on each keyframe. If you just click on one that you want to edit, it will jump to that position in the animation and you can modify things like the camera location. It even gives you this kind of camera view reference grid. Anyway, any changes you make, you can hit apply. You can also change how long it takes to get from one keyframe to the next. So for example, here's my starting keyframe. If I want to stretch it out so that the time from one to the next is, I can just click and drag this scroll thing here, hit apply, or I can go to the very end. If I want to make the whole thing longer, if you just change the time frame and hit apply, now when I go back, I'll click the back button. Now if I hit preview, the whole walkthrough should be a little more leisurely. And there you have it. I'll just hit escape to stop the animation. And you can either present that animation live in a classroom, or if we go back to SketchUp, we can call up the capturing menu and capture this as a video file. I'll just right click on a blank area of the screen, choose Enscape Capturing, and you'll see there's a whole menu for capturing. This first one, by the way, is the same as Shift F11. If you tap that, it will render the image. You can also save your Enscape rendered view as a standalone EXE or web view. If you wanna send it to say your parents, you can just save it as a web view and that's an emailable link and they can open it up on any of their devices. For us, we want to go and save this as a movie. What I would strongly recommend before doing that, and this is the render video button here, is first of all, save your file, file, save, because you never know, these things can crash. And when you're exporting, that's a good time for your file to crash. So absolutely, every time before you save an image or a movie, hit save. But the other thing is, you might want to save the video path. And what this does here, I'll just click save. It will save a file that is a video path. Save that file, and then, then when you come back tomorrow, if you're using, say, a desktop or whatever, you just close uh, SketchUp, you can load that path back in. For whatever reason, the path does not remain part of the file in the same way that, so, oh, I don't know, light sources remain part of the file. I'll just export the video file by clicking the Render Video button, and like magic, it will export it. It will use, by the way, the settings we have already uh, set up here on the Capture tab. Typically, you want to find a file size that's going to work for how you plan to distribute it. If you use lossless, you're gonna have a humongous file. If you choose email, you're gonna lose a lot of resolution, but you'll also have a file that you might actually be able to submit. I'll just use maximum because that's the default value. And what you'll see, depending on the resolution that you've chosen, mine was set to maximum, this video could take 10, 20, even 30 minutes to export, depending on how long it is. If it's taking too long or you just want a quicker preview, by all means, choose the email setting and you'll get a video result much faster.